Dear friends, once again, I extend my warm greetings to each and every one of you. I would like to emphasize the reasons behind my decision to arrange this event and the rationale behind naming my series of lectures as the so-called Lectures of Dao Dodo. In reality, Dao is the way. Do not think that I have gone crazy there. In some way, I have been deeply touched and profoundly influenced by the wisdom of Eastern philosophy. I was recently pondering how to label the subject I wish to discuss, and I concluded that this particular Chinese term would be an excellent match due to the presence of distinct principles and approaches that render us exceptional and one of a kind. Hence, we can refer to this as Dao Dodo. The topic I want to talk about is my idea of gathering for an hour every week, recording and sharing cases, conclusions, and key decision-making principles that I want to preserve in the company. This will help you, our future colleagues, and everyone else to develop our wonderful company in the future. I believe that by dedicating this time and effort, we can create a strong foundation for success and growth. All of this is based on my personal experience. I have never studied business before. Uh, honestly, I haven't read numerous books, but I've been in the business for two decades. I've come a long way and I've made a plethora of mistakes. The company has expanded from a single individual to a significantly large organization. I won't reiterate this fact as you are already aware of it. My intention is to concentrate on the management of teams and the process of product creation within a managerial context rather than solely on my personal entrepreneurial experience. Why? Because I often get asked to talk specifically about entrepreneurship at some external meetings, but we wouldn't have achieved the current results if they did not do something cool in management, because entrepreneurship is significant. We need to not lose the elegant spirit of entrepreneurship, but it is also important to be able to manage and develop the business. And here, I think we have also done a lot of things. It is interesting what is worth preserving. Why? Look, as I've already mentioned, we started from scratch and made significant progress going from zero to one. Our company was established 12 years ago. At that time, this company had absolutely nothing and was devoid of any resources or assets. And presently, we are an international company operating in 19 countries with a substantial number of employees, large scale products, a significant brand for us and a substantial potential for our startups. And this is a lengthy journey and we experienced numerous transformations because at each stage there's a process of natural selection, screening taking place. Not all companies manage to reach such sizes. We achieved this without possessing any significant resources in extremely difficult conditions. It is likely that our country is not the most comfortable for business development in terms of attracting investments. Simultaneously, there are advantages, lack of competition, highly flexible and growing market. But I can't say that everything was very easy and simple there. And we did it all openly, being a completely open company. Always tried to act, but acted as openly as possible, honestly here, and achieved something. And in fact, it signifies that there is an obstacle in our path. I desire to discuss in these conditional lectures the extraordinary, significant things that are permitted to be accomplished in order to progress from nothing to something, ensuring its preservation. In general, throughout the process, you have the opportunity to suggest topics and ask questions. I will depend on your feedback. Today I would like to discuss a highly significant matter. It appears, perhaps, that this is not such a fundamental thing after all. In fact, today you will discover that this is the fundamental configuration of our organization. This is the lack of API. I request that you contemplate particular inquiries on this subject matter throughout my narrative. My intention is to direct my attention solely towards you. I kindly request that any other inquiries be postponed until a later time. I was contemplating the factors that determine the overall outcomes of an organization in a general sense. Any company is an org, it's a certain group of PL, a group of five gathered, 10, a thousand. And what determines whether they will achieve a result? 
success, how effective they will be. Because we have some abstraction in the form of a company in our heads, but it is actually an abstraction, not a tangible entity, that can be physically grasped or measured. All schemes, all organizational processes, it all does not have any existence in reality or actuality. This is a convention. What determines the success of an organization? These are three things besides resources. Put resources in parentheses. Some have more, some have less. Goals are formulated properly. Strategy determines where to go. Best of luck. You have the ability to proceed very efficiently in a totally incorrect direction. This is communication. How many, well, what people are there in total, precisely speaking? Any procedures within the organization involve the exchange of information. The overall process entails the transmission of information. There is a word that many people love, processes. This is also communication. And the third element, which is the most important one, is people. Uh, individuals engage in commerce. An individual's introspect. This is the impetus. This is the field of study concerning the human mind and behavior. And it is crucial why we are doing this, how we are doing this, with what energy we are doing this task. That is, it is motivation. And motivation in general is the most important factor to drive success. What is the motivation within the company, to a large extent, of individuals? It plays a vital role in determining the results and success of any organization. Understanding and nurturing employee motivation is crucial for achieving optimal performance and creating a thriving work environment. Why is it important to have key performance indicators, KPI, or not? Companies are categorized into those that have KPI and those that do not possess KPI. I will inform you at a later time what KPI stands for. Maybe not everybody comprehends completely what I am trying to convey with this. We are a relatively sizable company. And in general, there are not many such large companies like us that do not have traditional boiling points. In fact, they are a minority. There are extremely, extremely few of them at present. Just a moment. Please allow me to turn on the camera, if you please. Thank you. All, currently there exist two instances of myself. Companies that have achieved a considerable size and do not possess key performance indicators are in the minority. Our main goal is to tackle the substantial challenge of remaining a company without relying on key performance indicators, which presents a major obstacle in assessing and measuring our progress and achievements. Yes, because it is a challenge, because, again, the more people, the more businesses, the more temptations. Again, how to come to the system, skip yay? Once more, at a later time, I will provide a detailed explanation regarding the reasons and the nature of it. Generally speaking, I observe that, well, overall, there exists a significant amount of duality in the world. We have a left leg, a right leg, there are physicists, there are lyrics, and in life, in business, I see two poles. So there are people inclined, I'm not saying now that it's some kind of evaluation, bad or good, there are individuals who are inclined to no longer have trust and control. There are individuals who are more inclined, who require trust and freedom. Someone believes that you can achieve a result by attaining this efficiency from individuals, while others perceive it in a different way, that the potential of individuals needs to be unleashed. These are two different views. We look at the glass. It is half full or half empty. Actually, it's the same glass. Some think the main process is, while others think the main thing is people of culture. This does not negate one another, but still something like the main thing. Again, all this leads to the fact that some areas have KPIs while others do not. The approach is likely when we, we collaborate with key performance indicators for the purpose of incentivizing, well, it is impolite to say, but fundamentally it is like that, either to ignite motivation in an individual. Actually, that's why whether there are KPIs or not, it's a big question with significance. Uh, determines within the company, within the culture, uh, such a very large setting. What is the meaning of KPI in business management? This slide should have been placed at the very beginning. This is an abbreviation. It is decrypted as KPI, which stands for Key Performance Indicators. That is, the key metrics used to measure performance and track progress in achieving goals and objectives. Uh, what is KPI? KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. These are numbers metrics that show how much we are measuring our performance and help us track progress towards our goals. We perform well, we are moving towards the goal, but the difference between KPI and metrics, what I understand from the words KPI is not quite right. However, we are already accustomed to it. It is something 
metrics for which employees receive a bonus. So this is a form of payment based on piecework, where you fulfill the plan, achieve a specific indicators, and then receive a bonus as a result. So it all comes down to some motivation. It seems like some banal thing, and a substantial number of companies, you know, they operate in such a manner that they have a designated salary, there is an additional bonus component, a bonus component that is tied to the achievement of specific performance indicators. It would appear for what reason is this so extreme and unconventional in nature? Exert influence on the company, shape the culture's trajectory? Maybe such a question arises and it's not immediately obvious. I'd like to emphasize that the lack of KPI doesn't mean the lack of metrics. Our company is full of metrics. We even measure the part index in pizzerias. What is the level of satisfaction among our colleagues working in pizzerias and how satisfied are they with their work in this industry? But we don't have KPI in our company. Well, or nearly the same, I will say about it. What is the matter or concern with key performance indicators, which are commonly referred to as KPIs? This is an attempt to formalize and provide structure to a complex and constantly evolving reality that is subject to change. It is nearly impossible, particularly in intricate businesses, in intricate products, especially when, under certain conditions, we can rectify that by utilizing some floating point numbers, thereby demonstrating that we have the ability to address the issue effectively. Let's go in the right direction, metrics are. However, when we tie employee income to these metrics, we inadvertently and immediately break motivation which can have detrimental effects on productivity and overall performance within the organization. And regardless of the level of consciousness a person possesses, and he understood his mission, he understands that his material component, basic main part of Maslow's pyramid, is still connected with these metrics. And the meaning of his work is to fulfill these metrics. Given that reality is always changing, the world of business and life is extremely challenging, so we are in favor of finding solutions. It is extremely rare that we are able to clearly tie our work to specific metrics and measure our impact accurately. First of all, because the strategy may change, the situation may change. At a certain juncture, we inevitably reach a moment where we must let go and move on. Refrain from accelerating any metrics as it can be detrimental in the long term and have adverse effects on overall performance. Here I'll bring Agile. I have perused the Agile Manifesto. Yes, indeed, the manifesto, just the one I read, the manifesto that outlines the principles of Agile software development probably in years, Five or three, four years after the Dudu Pizza appeared, three, four years after the appearance of the Dudu Pizza. And I read it and understood that I always thought that and understood that. This is merely the application of such a common sense entrepreneurial approach to the development process, utilizing a straightforward and practical method. Because the software development process is unpredictable and complex, it cannot be completely packaged into formal metrics or described in the technical specification due to its unpredictability and complexity. And actually, then the Agile Manifesto appeared. But this Agile Manifesto, it is written for development, but it actually works for everything. About what for life? About what marriage, which is concluded on a marriage contract, will not be obviously happy, because firstly, you cannot prescribe everything in a marriage contract. And life is much more complex in relationships than for example, a marriage contract. Uh, although the Yao Manifesto states, while not denying the significance of what is on the right, we still prioritize what is on the left more in terms of value. This signifies that processes, metrics, agreements, formal agreements, system, they are essential and they hold importance and significance in their respective domains. But still, relationships, people, understanding through common sense of the meaning of their work, mission it is more important than the documents we create because we are trying to formalize a reality that in principle cannot be formalized even in general in principle if you delve a bit into philosophy then human language is a form of formalization because we created words and frequently we assign some absolute significance to words despite their attempt to represent a concept simplifying existence in many languages, there are words that don't exist in Russian, and in Russian, there are other words not found in other languages. What other tasks or responsibilities does KPI have apart from its primary function? KPI translates internal work within the company, which ultimately creates some value for the client, and in general, 
this is the meaning of its existence. That is the meaning of the business's existence, uh, creating some value for the world, for the client in commodity money relations. And then it turns out that we create not just one product, but there are always some contradictions between teams. And in such a system, it is very difficult to go, not even for compromises, but to bypass common solutions, to donate in the moment, to comprehend the overall big goal and uh, the ultimate objective that guides our actions and decisions. With regards to the practical component, key performance indicators, KPIs, effectively replace the understanding of the meaning behind why I am engaging in this particular endeavor. They establish a mini business entity within the larger organization leading you to perceive your actions not merely as an additional value contributed to the common cause, but rather as a service that merits financial remuneration from the company for the provided services rendered. Key performance indicators definitely hinder the process of achieving big goals effectively and efficiently. This hampers large goals. Assuming our income is tied to short-term goals, a person is structured in a way that we won't set ambitious goals due to fear of making mistakes. As our family's income depends specifically on it the following day, this significantly decreases the planning horizon, aspirations, and does not permit for a lack of key performance indicator. This is precisely the objective and key results OKR system, which incidentally, I also discovered much later, similar to the Agile Manifesto. And realize that we always had a system of UKR urgency knowledge resources when we set big goals and asked ourselves how we could achieve them. Life is beautiful and business is an opportunity to achieve something interesting, create something new, do something cool and be useful in making a positive impact on the world around us and leaving a lasting legacy. KPI definitely does not contribute to this mindset. KPI destroys teamwork and teams because it collides at the level of the lowest pyramid of oil financiers marketers, logisticians, operators, and business developers. KPI, or Key Performance Indicator, measures performance. However, in this context, KPI is seen as detrimental to teamwork and collaboration, as it creates competition and undermines the collective effort of the team members. Goals frequently clash and contradict in different products. Hmm, there is a conflict of interest. In the absence of boiling, this conflict of interest is productive, as it can ultimately result in the discovery of a mutually acceptable solution. If strategic goals give way to someone, then KPI leads to conflicts and disputes within companies, causing disruption and hindering productivity. KPI, of course, does not allow the company to be flexible. Imagine that you have established some KPIs. Yep. You've set KPIs for the year, but you, you're the owner, you're the product. You are responsible for some part of the product or for the business. And in the middle of the year, you realize that you need to change everything go a little in the wrong direction, but you're pressured by KPI and we're currently being pressured by self-imposed digital ones. Duties, however, when it comes to our system, there can be no room for compromise or negligence, motivation on which it is. Keep in mind that motivation is the cornerstone, our own motivation. In turn, this unquestionably renders the company rigid and unadaptable. KPI often forms a parallel world against common sense, sense because everything has already changed, but we have key performance indicators we have formal ones we adopted for our use, and that is it. Uh, in the USSR, this situation led to people understanding and getting used to the parallel reality that coexisted with their everyday lives, shaping their perception of the world and their ability to navigate within it. It was the subject of jokes, anecdotes. Why do companies even introduce KPIs? Once again, please take a look. This is not mine and does not belong to me. Metaphysical critique of this system. This is merely another approach to BKPI, and he is simpler in something, while ours is more complex and requires greater effort uh, in that particular manner following that specific course of action. The way is not, does not permit individuals to achieve any outstanding results or make significant progress towards their goals. To begin with, KPI creates an illusion of control. This happens when all the SEO companies establish KPI for each and every individual in their organization, and he believes that the company has become manageable. Irrespective of individual's mood, it is similar to a machine, a skeletal structure. But it is an illusion because in reality, the motivation of individuals, that is, as they say, the work. Individuals participate in a wide range of actions, 
which may not necessarily be directly connected to key performance indicators, KPIs, or their measurement of success. Perhaps in certain areas, KPIs may be overestimated, while in other areas, they may be underestimated. When KPIs are exaggerated, they lose their ability to inspire. Underestimated, even more so. But there's an illusion, there's manage. It is very important for a person to create this illusion because the functioning of our brain and how it works, and it is all interconnected, forming a complex web of relationships which can be attributed to a deep-rooted sense of distrust. This distrust arises when there is a lack of trust in people, causing a breakdown in communication and strained interactions among individuals. They possess the capability to sincerely comprehend their role, their mission, without any key performance indicator pressure, invest, put in effort, and strive relentlessly to achieve optimal and outstanding results. This is a certain perspective, an attempt to take control of all this. What advantages does working without KPI provide for business? Collaboration and synergy among people and teams are crucial for maintaining flexibility in our ever-evolving modern world, changing. The capacity to achieve substantial unconventional goals and generate innovative ideas and solutions. Yes, because it implies the meaning. Not to some fans that drives individuals. Innovations can occasionally emerge entirely there when we made a slight adjustment, turning a bit to the side. Does work without KPI have efficiency? And behold, here I will put forth a question. Due to the fact that, without a doubt, at specific moments in time and without question, in a specific culture, work without KPI gives great efficiency. Because the company highly values individuals who are conscious, appreciate trust, and value freedom of action, it seeks to attract and retain such people in its workforce. Um, it is more decentralized, more flexible, and a reduced amount of time is needed for management. However, simultaneously, naturally, a company with key performance indicators KPI can, in specific instances, if the company is lacking. If KPI loses some things, then it can start losing the company with KPI exactly, because, moreover, the army of coercion is, so to speak, a presence that exists in something, it can be found in something, and it is a significant factor to consider. There is a free pirate ship and an army, uh, even though it's a regular army, there is also one present. Practicing mindfulness and having a deep understanding of the mission. What are the benefits of working without QPI for individuals? Well, first of all, who is this important for? This is a job in a company where there is an environment, culture, trust, and freedom, where there is no pressure on control. For numerous people, it is crucial to determine the location where they can take responsibility. Undoubtedly, this is an opportunity to realize oneself. So. In what context and for whom is the implementation of their creative potential considered to be very important? To a certain extent, this is less stressful because when you have a fixed salary that suits you in your current role, stage of life, level of responsibility and competence, you can work in a more relaxed and free manner because you are not a machine and therefore you cannot always move forward at a relentless pace like a robot, tirelessly chasing progress without rest or reflection. One can experience both ups and downs in this context, but it is unquestionably true that there is a decreased amount of pressure in this environment uh, to consistently demonstrate performance, which is an absolute necessity. However, on the other hand, the formal system is more comprehensible and easier to grasp, making it a preferred choice for many people. When I encountered situations in our company where there were no KPIs, people would come and say that everything was fine, but uh, at my previous job, it was clear to me here you have done so much. Well done. Not done. Not good. I don't understand anything here because I did a lot. Not good because I could have done more. Or, for instance, did nothing, but well executed. Nothing panned out, but well executed. This is much more, you know, a sort of less, uh, perhaps a clear-cut system. But, so it's her definite minus. Well, what's the downside? This is not a minus. It's her peculiarity. Indeed, yes. It is not possible without the assessment and expertise of an expert professional. In reality, this is very much human. These are relationships between human beings. When there is a particular overall expert assessment, in principle, essentially, it's like the result is impressive there. It has potential for improvement. It's lacking in that area. It requires enhancement. It's not functioning effectively in this position. Yes, it's more of an internal expert assessment. So. A completely comprehensive expert assessment, which can also be based on numerical data. How does our company operate without key performance indicators? 
In reality, at this moment, we currently possess a fixed salary that is intended to accurately reflect the market, level of responsibility, competencies, and it is expected to grow in tandem with an increase in the level of responsibility and market competencies. And it must undoubtedly be suitable for an individual. It should be in such a way that the lower part of the oil pyramid is sealed and we are able to generate, establish significant objectives, creatively realize ourselves and innovate by coming up with new ideas, concepts and solutions. We have, in addition to this, a very important element, an option program. Uh, look, the option program in a significant way, uh, we have key performance indicator one, but it is common and it should consistently become common. This is an option program. In fact, why? Because the cost of shares is a key performance indicator, but it reflects our long-term future, current situation and present circumstances. And this is the outcome of everything, both Dodo Pizza and the donor and Drink It. This is an evaluation of our entire company. The option program is important because it is a key performance indicator that reflects the overall result of the company's performance and helps assess the effectiveness of our strategies and goals. And it reflects both the current result and the long-term one because the evaluation of our shares always takes into account our growth potential. I have faith in us as a long-term entity and as a current board member, I would like to emphasize that both the future and current members of the board firmly believe that we must always support and enhance the stock option program. Even though we do not currently have it, we strongly believe that it should be widely implemented until we become a publicly traded company. In the meantime, we will engage in buyback activities to provide liquidity for our shares and ensure that we are well positioned for future growth and success. And it is during this particular time that employees who own shares can make a decision to sell the shares they have acquired or choose to retain them based on their preference and individual circumstances. And in this way, a decision is made regarding an investment, thus determining the course of action to be taken. If you own shares, you are interested in the company's growth. And it is important that each of our employees, uh, regardless of the whether they think as a partner who creates common great value, keep in mind that uh, having the right culture from my point of view is important. However, it's crucial to note that this does not imply that other cultures are inherently bad from my perspective. There is a legend that Kennedy once came to NASA and observed an African-American grandfather diligently sweeping the floors of the facility with a broom in hand. As per his statement, I'm instrumental in the process of launching rockets into space. Furthermore, he actively contributes to the development of a substantial component of a major product, namely a singular noteworthy narrative option program. If we lack shares in the options fund, I think we need to create virtual shares. This is a. These are a few additional bonuses that are intricately tied to the capitalization of the company and function in exactly the same manner as stocks, providing employees with similar benefits and incentives for their hard work and dedication. They cannot be sold. Perhaps the company will buy them when a person resigns. If we are talking about virtual shares. However, they function in an identical manner as they are linked to the overall expenses of the companies. Additionally, we are presently contemplating yearly incentives derived from the organization's earnings, which are distributed based on performance evaluations, i.e. this accountability, and it is universally understood that each individual receives a portion of the completed profits. And it is crucial that all individuals comprehend that we are a unified team with complete transparency throughout the organization ensuring that every member understands the inner workings of our company. What are the potential risks of working without key performance indicators? This is of utmost importance. There are risks and they are big friends. In general, work without key performance indicators on a large scale requires diligent efforts to maintain culture. Companies, it necessitates constant efforts to maintain culture. Because as soon as this uh, culture disappears, when we trust individuals, when we do not meet out punishment for errors, when we gain knowledge from these errors, when the team ceases to collaborate, when there is no genuine awareness of their role, authentic product ownership within the organization, then the culture starts to fade away and the values that once defined us begin to erode, leading to a decline in morale, innovation, and overall success. And this will lead to the fact that the system will not work because some of our shareholders may come and say that we have become very inefficient. No one wants to work anymore. And this will have a detrimental impact on our overall productivity and success. Because a work culture that does not have key performance indicators requires mindfulness, understanding, and a genuine love for one's work. 
And thus, there is a possibility of transforming. This is constantly a risk of this organization without key performance indicators. When there is no key performance indicator, we do not want to set ambitious goals. We do not want to venture beyond our comfort zone. And there is no KPI. We are all human. We are all sometimes lazy. Let's put it this way. People are all more or less the same uh, as if our human essence. And we all have a strong desire for ambitious goals. We are all slightly different from each other but we all definitely love to indulge in laziness. Thus, this well-nourished cat poses a threat to our mission of preserving and protecting our valuable culture and heritage. What are the methods to save money? This is significant. We are all complete. This represents openness. Openness, which does not permit us to become ossified in any manner because it is consistently some form of pressure that keeps us adaptable and prevents stagnation in any aspect of our lives. Openness is a specific and widely shared system. Our daily meetings, the topic at hand, some meetings with public promises, when we engage in conversation about it. It is not just a casual matter or a trivial issue. This is a fundamental part of our culture and it needs to be developed and supported because without it, this culture will not work effectively because public promises inspire and motivate us. Somewhere they force us to step out of our comfort zone and strive to achieve some truly remarkable and impressive results. Uh, a story that is made public about our actions and what we did serves as inspiration to us uh, because it is cool and fascinating. If you have accomplished a task, obtaining approval from clients, colleagues, and partners, this is precisely the subsequent component of the oil pyramid that serves as inspiration for us as individuals who are driven and motivated to create and innovate in our respective fields of expertise. And this inspires not only us, but also other colleagues, everyone. Because if, uh, if some team came up with a cool thing, we don't miss out in our company. I always feel and see that we are happy. Uh, this inspires us to participate in various cool activities and pursue our passions as well. Uh, and the crucial aspect that openness leads to is responsibility towards partners, clients, and shareholders, respectively. Bye. Listen, we absolutely must save this. This is an immense amount of pressure that we cannot afford to underestimate or ignore. Guests desire for us to possess a trendy product. In the event that any of our pizza establishments begins to function inadequately, the quality of being open and transparent enables the issue to be promptly apparent, thereby preventing us from being complacent. Our partners do not let us get bored because we need to be open with them. Shareholders will ask us. And many are listening. There are a lot of shareholders here, and we need our great finance team to constantly talk about how the company is developing, where we are efficient, where we are not efficient. Our shareholders will pose questions to us. This will also serve as inspiration for us, enabling us to become more efficient and ensuring that we do not undergo a transformation into holy cats. Thus, openness is of utmost importance to us. She must embody coolness, innovation, and a forward-thinking mindset. I will now provide a brief description of two ongoing cases and then proceed to ask questions. Uh, I highly recommend writing in the chat so that I can already select some interesting ones because there is not much time available for questions to be asked. Two current cases. Look, they are from Drinketa because I am currently heavily involved in Drinketa. Again, uh, this doesn't imply somehow. There, I don't know, we think in drink. Somehow we will all come across this and I would like to do just that. Once again, it was of utmost importance for me to explain and convey to each and every individual because I observe that in certain moments, we cannot help but see this fundamental principle and begin to deviate slightly from our intended course of action. We had a case that required our attention and investigation. Discussed with Sasha Umarov, so to us. An incredible premises search manager arrived and he was highly acclaimed, receiving multiple awards at his previous position for his outstanding work and dedication for every room that is discovered because it is a, a common practice in the market to do so. When the result is easy to evaluate often, they're giving, creating system, and Sasha truly believed with all sincerity that it was, does not contradict or oppose our system. But I say, no, Sasha, look, the fact that there is a certain standard in the market, we cannot work with it. Therefore, what we can't change the principle to, the principle that he operates in every single location. Because once we utter that statement, we are presenting an award for discovering a location. It transpires that with each action, we generate value each and every day. An individual generates ideas, the work of each and every person is equally significant. Um, and in the event that we initiate our work with a particular individual, 
uh, we can begin the process of collaboration, market standards to evaluate, then we break everything in general. Uh, because it does not work in the same manner for us. Uh, and uh, I communicated to Sasha that we should extend an offer to our new colleague with a fixed salary instead of a variable one. Explain the advantages, because on the one hand, we believe him that he always came to us as a professional who desires to grow in the company, who is in line with the company's goals and culture, and he'll sincerely try to find the max number of rooms because he's in the team he wants drink it to develop. And he will have a fixed salary that will correspond to the average of what he received. She will grow with the increase of drink it, but he will be on the team. It's great that all people accepted and we achieved it. Principle same, importance unchanged to me. Uh, the purpose was to explain this because the principle works effectively for the entire company as a whole. We had the same story in coffee shops. When we want to teach now, we have many new coffee shop chains to provide training for our teams in pizzerias to become franchisors. However, since this is an additional one for them, work, uh, there was an idea to make it an additional bonus. Again, this also breaks our principle because we, no way, should not request the barista to work beyond a specific quantity. Time, they will get tired. In that time, that responsibility, which they currently possess it, if we are willing to obtain it, uh, if we begin translating tasks into monetary value, we will also disrupt the entire system of thinking and approach. It appears that common sense indicates that we must do it in this manner, but it was crucial for me to demonstrate to you that the principle is effective in all situations, and in reality, it is beneficial for both the company and us, the individuals.